All right, looks like we are live. So consumer prices here in the US are at five year lows. However, that is misleading. A lot of it has to do with low gasoline prices, low oil prices at 34 year lows, unbelievable. So we're gonna talk about the supply chain problems with food here in the US, with meat specifically, looks like pork and beef, also chicken. The chairman of the board of Tyson Foods over the weekend penned an op-ed, it went everywhere, but there's also been warnings from Thomas Massey. If you're not familiar with him, he is in the House of Representatives. He is a libertarian, he is small government. He's a pretty amazing Renaissance man. He's also a rancher. So he has a lot of talent. Um, I think he was a technology entrepreneur too. Very, very talented guy. But he's been tweeting a lot about the problems in the food supply chain for weeks now. And last two days, seeing the alternative is to do nothing while staring at bare supermarket shelves. Far anim farm animals will be euthanized and buried in pits or burned. If nothing changes, crops are already being plowed under and milk is already being poured out. So he's working on some congressional legislation to try to fix things, but the food supply chain is breaking. And unfortunately for a lot of American farmers, there's been Farmageddon for at least 18 to 24 months. It was pretty bad, according to some of the conversations I've had with some farmers. It was pretty bad before the Trump trade war with China, where he put the tariffs on and then China retaliated and then China refused to buy soybeans and pork for a while. To my knowledge, I don't think they've still bought much pork or soybeans. At least earlier this year, they hadn't bought any so far. I'm not sure. I haven't checked the data recently, but they hadn't really bought much um, since that uh, phony trade agreement for phase one was agreed to. So maybe they have bought some and I just haven't checked it lately. But the chairman of Tyson Foods, Pend that the supply chain, millions of pounds of meat will disappear from the supply chain as the global pandemic pushes food processing plants to close, leading to product shortages in grocery stores across the country. Quote, the food supply chain is breaking, wrote board chairman John Tyson in a full page advertisement published, sun published Sunday in the New York Times, Washington Post and Arkansas Democrat Gazette. I think that's in Arkansas, that's where the Tyson Foods main headquarters is. U.S. farmers don't have anywhere to sell their livestock, he said, adding that, quote, millions of animals, chickens, pigs, and cattle will be depopulated or euthanized because of the closure of our processing facilities. And that's because I believe over 1,100 workers have gotten infected with the global pandemic at these meat processing plants. So there's been... I'm not sure if they've reopened yet, but there was three major pork ones for Smithfield. There was one in South Dakota. There was one in Missouri and one in Wisconsin. And there's been other reported problems as well. I think one in North Carolina. I think it was beef or uh, it might have been pork too. Okay, quote, there will be limited, I have all these articles open. I have like, I think 10 different windows of articles. There will be limited supply of our products available in grocery stores until we are able to reopen our facilities that are currently closed, Tyson wrote. Tyson Foods, which employs roughly 100,000 workers, closed its pork plants in Waterloo, Iowa and Logansport, Indiana last week so that workers in those facilities could be tested for the global pandemic. The Waterloo plant uh, closure came after weeks of public pressure. Production had already slowed there because many of its 2,800 workers had been calling out sick and local health authorities linked the Tyson plant to 182 cases of the global pandemic, nearly half of the county's total. CNN recently spoke to three employees who work in the facility who expressed ongoing concerns that not enough was done to protect them from the global pandemic. One worker said that practicing social distancing in, inside the facility was basically impossible to do. Asked by CNN about those claims, Tyson Foods said that the plants apparently also they're being charged to, for their own cheap, um, their cheap mass. Apparently they're being charged for them. The employees are not getting them free. The company's too cheap to even pay for them. Asked by CNN about those claims, Tyson Foods said that plants were sanitized daily. And Tyson, the chairman, wrote in Sunday's advertisement that the company has taken steps to protect its workers, including taking their temperatures and requiring face masks in all of its facilities. What's not noted here, like I said, is I think the workers have to pay for their own masks. And they're not being being paid that much either. 
he added that the company is paying out bonuses to frontline workers and truckers as well as donating food in local communities. Some of the county's largest abattoirs, ab oh man, I mean, A B B A T O I R S, never heard that word before, processing plants or slaughterhouses have been in parenthesis have been forced to cease operations temporarily after thousands of employees across the country have tested positive for the global pandemic. Pork processing plants have been uh, hit especially hard, with three of the largest in the United States going offline indefinitely. The Smithfield Foods one in South uh, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, GBS Pork Processing in Worthington, Minnesota, and the Tyson plant in Waterloo, Iowa. Together, the three plants account for approximately 15% of pork production. There's been a ton of interviews with farmers all over the mainstream media, so there's a lot of interviews. Fox News has been interviewing a lot of them. I saw one earlier today, one of the farmers said that he's losing 60 or $70 per farm animal. So they're, they're having enormous amounts of losses. The supply chain is breaking. There's nowhere to, there's, uh, I guess, nowhere to put the animals right now. There's an overpopulation then. It's, it, the supply chain is not designed to store the animals safely for a long time. That's what it sounds like. Okay, the article i also there's a whole collage there on your screen for you to take a look at all those different articles you can go and look them up there's a really good tweet that michelle malkin put out earlier today talking about stagflation so she went to costco and noticed that the price of pork fresh pork the price of fresh chicken the price of fresh beef all those prices were up so the dichotomy the divergence we have is that u.s consumer prices are saying that it is deflation, and the angry guy who was calling me names before I blocked him in the comment section a couple days ago for t over 24 hours was saying how there's definitely deflation, Jason, because all the debt is deflating, and there must be deflation because the asset prices are all deflating. And I was like, look, dude, meanwhile, what is your grocery store bill telling you? So it's not pure deflation. Okay, there's a it's a weird distorted mix because of the global pandemic, central bank intervention, government intervention, um, government screwing things up, rules, regulations, as Thomas Massey, Representative Thomas Massey is talking about. These distortions, these problems are creating stagflation in the supply chain for food, especially for meat, from what it looks like. The price of meat has been going up pretty substantially for over a year now with the African swine flu and how much demand for meat was coming out of China. They were importing an enormous amount of pork, so I noticed the pork prices and the portions of pork for over a year now have been... Uh, the portion pri the portions have been declining and the prices have been increasing here in the U.S. But Farmageddon, the farmers were dealing with this for well over a year now with the tariffs. There was a lot of Wisconsin dairy farmers that have got that went bankrupt all of 2019, a record amount of them. And that was because they were not able to pass on their cost increases to the customer. So uh, from talking with some of these dairy farmers, that the government had price fixing, so they had wage uh, price controls. On milk so farmers were not allowed to increase prices and their costs for dairy were rising so it was no longer profitable for a lot of dairy farmers and that's why you had Dean Foods and Borden Foods go bankrupt in 2019 if you're not familiar with Dean Foods and Borden they're two of the largest milk processors in the United States I think the two largest Okay, so this article is from Cassandra Fairbank. So I've met in person. She's cool. April 13th, 2020, from Gateway Pundit about Thomas Massey. Representative Massey warns U.S. is weeks away, not months, from food shortages. Kentucky Representative Thomas Massey is warning that the United States could be just weeks away from major food shortages due to the coronavirus shutdown. He warned that livestock could end up being euthanized and fruits and vegetables will be left to rot in the fields if a drastic change isn't made. Quote, we are weeks, not months away from farmers euthanizing animals that would have been sold for meat or food. Also, fruits and vegetables are going to rot in the fields. A drastic change in policy this week could ameliorate this inevitability. He tweeted along with a link to a radio show he appeared on to discuss the issue. During the interview, Massey raised concerns about the fact that while there is livestock, farms have nowhere to send them because meat processing plants have shut down because of the global pandemic. Quote, you have people running the government that have no clue about how the economy works and how their food gets to the table, Massey said. Also, the, the other part of this is restaurants. There is no demand right now or very little demand from restaurants. So school lunches, restaurants, sporting events. 
Um, the National Restaurant Association earlier this week released a report, a survey, saying that, that a lot of restaurants in the United States, their revenues have collapsed 70% to 100%. And they estimate the losses from American restaurants at over $50 billion for the month of April. And they're projecting $280 billion in losses for 2020. It's unbelievable how bad the losses are for restaurants. It's truly, truly sad through no fault of their own. Quote, you have people running the government that have no clue about how the economy works and how their food gets to the table, Massey said. The shocking thing is that farmers are watching the value of their hogs and steers. Cows go down. In fact, they're going to some of the lowest levels ever, he added. So the question is, why is the price of meat going up in the supermarkets and the price of cattle going down at the auction ring? It's because our supply line is brittle. You have to take cattle, steer, beef, whatever, hogs to a processing plant. And these processing plants, like much of industrial America right now, are shutting down because of absentees, which has been exacerbated by the unemployment program the federal government has instituted, plus the $1,200 checks that are about to hit, plus some of the regulations that the states have put in place. So it sounds like a bunch of government intervention. You also have a scenario now where a lot of people are getting paid an extra $600 per week to be on unemployment, that's more money than they were making at their jobs, being productive in society. So again, another government distortion. Massey explained that six of the largest processing plants are now shut down. Quote, I'm afraid you're going to see cattle and hogs being euthanized or incinerated and buried while we have shortages at the supermarket. And you talk about civil unrest when you start seeing that. Yep, because the American consumer is not going to be able to afford higher prices, especially when people just lost their jobs. Although some people now apparently are making more money on unemployment. But uh, the people who are not filing for unemployment, they're not going to be able to afford the price increases as much. Okay, and that's uh, and it's all because of the brittle food supply chain, he said. The Kentucky representative said that he has also introduced a bill to help prevent a shortage. Quote, I've got a bill that would let local meat packers sell cuts of meat individually instead of having to sell half a cow or a quarter of a cow. So he's trying to fix the problem. Meanwhile, I think President Trump is trying to, this article just came out from Bloomberg today, Trump orders meat plants to stay open and move slam by union. President Donald Trump has signed an executive order that compels slaughterhouses to remain open. That sets up a, sh a showdown between the giant companies that produce America's meat and the unions and activists who want to protect, protect workers in a pandemic. Meat processing plants around the U.S. have shut down because of the global pandemic, but Trump said in the order that, quote, such closures threaten the continued functioning of the national meat and poultry supply chain, undermining critical infrastructure during the national emergency. Sounds very, very similar to what Herbert Hoover and FDR did, unfortunately, during the Great Depression. Using the Defense Production Act, Trump is ordering plants to stay open as part of the critical infrastructure needed to keep people fed. Amid growing supply disruptions from the global pandemic, the government will provide additional protective gear for employees as well as guidance. We'll see how well that protective gear, we'll see how quickly they get that. I'm not holding my breath. There's been a lot of stories about the federal government not getting the PPE gear and the N95 masks to the people who need them. The move came just days after Tyson Foods, the biggest U.S. meat processor, ran paid ads in national newspapers stating that the food supply chain was broken. A handful of companies account for the majority of the nation's meat, and as workers fell sick in March, plants initially continued to run, but pressure from local health officials and unions led to voluntary closures. Companies have been pressing to reopen. The president himself has long agitated for Americans to return to work and restore an economy crippled by social distancing measures. Environmental Working Group uh, called the order a potential death sentence. The United Food and Commercial Workers Union said in a statement that if workers aren't safe, the food supply won't be either. At least 20 workers in meat and food processing have died, and 5,000 meatpacking workers have either tested positive for the global, pan global pandemic or were first forced to self-quarantine, according to UFCW. While unions have been speaking out against unsafe plant conditions and working for boosts in pay, collective bargaining agreements often restrict them from organizing or endorsing strikes. Still, lives are at stake. The unions say, quote, people should not be expected to put their lives at risk by going to work, said Stuart Applebaum, president of the Retail Wholesale and Department Store Union. They can't be assured of their safety. They have every right to make their concerns heard by their employers. It looks like also on Friday we're going to have a strike maybe by some Amazon warehouse workers and some other major workers, maybe some grocery store delivery. Looks like there could be a big strike on Friday. So Trump signaled the executive action at the White House on Tuesday, saying he planned to sign an order aimed at Tyson's liability, which had become a roadblock for the company. He didn't elaborate. So I guess Tyson Foods can't be sued. 
The order, though, is not to be limited to Tyson, an administration official said. It will affect many processing plants supplying beef, chicken, eggs, and pork. Shares in Tyson and poultry producer Sanderson Farms extended gains after the news, while JBS SA, the world's top meat producer, was little change. JBS's local unit and Smithfield Foods didn't immediately respond to calls. Okay, I'll skip the rest. There's a lot more here about the supply chain if you want to read more about it in that, that article. It is a mess. What can you do to protect yourself? I don't think this is an investable trend. I think you can protect, if, if you're keto or paleo, you might want to figure out how to stock up. You might want to start speaking to some local farmers. Might want to add in a second refrigerator in the garage or basement or freezer. Refrigerator and freezer combo. What a mess. Well, thanks for pointing that troll out in the chat section. I got rid of him. Super chat from Jesse. Thank you, Jesse. He's a friend of the show in real life. He's a friend in real life. Also, long-time listener, Spices and a Patreon account contributor, too. Spices are sold out at your local giant store. Um, I saw plenty of spices at BJ's Warehouse last week. So you got to check around. Uh, just because they're not available at the local supermarket doesn't mean uh, go check out Costco or BJ's Wholesale. They sell them in larger quantities. You could also check the Walmart website. You might be able to buy them on a Walmart website. Might only be limit one, though. There's ways around that. You Just because the, gro the grocery stores are having immense problems with their supply chains. Scott says, wouldn't it be in the food company's interest to give the workers the mass? Yes, one would think. But it seems like they're trying to cut corners. Profits over people. Sucks. A lot of these large companies do that. Seven eighty two says abattoir. Abattoir is a French word for slaughterhouse. Oh, I think I screwed up that pronunciation that time. Abattoir. You want to short the USO? <laughs> oh, you want to short the USO? I wonder if they're gonna ban that. After the USO crashes again, I wonder if they're going to ban shorts. <laughs> no, the US the USO is a horribly designed investment product. Uh That's too much information, dude. Oh, I'm not drinking right now. I have water. The last time I had a light beer on a live stream, I had one guy send like five or six messages below one of the videos accusing me of being an alcoholic. Just ridiculous. Okay, so uh, this is just going to be a shorter show. I have a bunch of links I'll put in the information and description section that slaughterhouses that supply America's meat are starting to close. Beef processors are closing U.S. plants, warn of beef shortages and hoarding. Grocers are hunting for meat as the global pandemic hobbles beef and pork plants. Tyson Chairman, food supply chain breaking as virus forces plant closures. So this is really the last thing that farmers needed. Farmers were having a lot of problems way before the global pandemic with the trade war that Trump had initiated because China was not buying soybeans and pork and farmers were dairy farmers were having immense problems prior to that. There was also, um, I think, a lot of flooding. There was a lot of um, excess rains in certain parts of the U.S. I was covering this. You can go back in the archives over the last year, year and a half, and look up Farmageddon. So I have a lot of different videos and articles that I've covered about that. Congressman warns U.S. could be weeks away from food shortages. Again, that was Thomas Massey. Thomas Massey, excuse me. He's one of the few ones that are warning about this. Our supply line is brittle. Thomas Massey warns U.S. could be weeks away from food shortages. U.S. stores and supermarkets might see shortages for the next year and a half, supply chain experts say. I'll read this one. Michelle Mark, 
from four days ago from Business Insider. Global supply chain disruptions and unprecedented demand have triggered shortages in household and grocery items in recent months, though things should mostly stabilize by the summertime. Experts told Business Insider some minor shortages uh, could persist throughout the next year and a half until a vaccine couldn't prevent widespread transmission of the novel uh, global pandemic. The supply chain will be susceptible to disruptions, particularly when it comes to factory and farm workers. Experts are confident that the U.S. food supply is robust and emphasize that there is no reason to panic. Uh-huh. But some... <laughs> I can't believe they put this in the article. But some consumers may experience more incon inconvenience when they shop. Uh-huh. American consumers have endured shortages of toilet paper, household cleaning products, and even grocery items like meat or flour in recent weeks. Also boxes of pasta for a while, too. Although now the grocery stores are starting to get those back in. In recent weeks, as the global pandemic has disrupted global supply chains, though experts told Business Insider they expect the situation to largely return to normal by the summertime. Not sure I agree with that. They also said minor shortages of certain items could hit consumers in waves over the next year or so, just like the global pandemic is expected to. Until a vaccine can prevent widespread transmission the supply, or, we, or we have herd immunity, the supply chain will be susceptible to disruptions, according to Patrick Penfield, a supply chain management professor at Syracuse University. That's because these industries are dependent on workers who can't always socially distance themselves from their colleagues or who haven't always been given protective equipment like masks and gloves or even basic benefits like health insurance or paid sick leave. For instance, factory workers and farm workers are all essential in maintaining supply chains if they get sick in mass. In mass these factories will have to temporarily close and decontaminate. This has already happened in meat processing plants across the country, sickening at least 1,800 workers at major players like Tyson, Tyson Foods, Smithfield Foods, and JBS, and forcing them to close. Overall, experts said they were confident that the national food supply is strong enough to feed all Americans who don't do keto or paleo, apparently, and emphasize that there is no reason to panic. It's just that some consumers, yeah, they can have Beyond Meat. They can, they can be a soy boy. <laughs> it's just that some consumers might experience more inconvenience when they shop we're quote we're still robust we're still okay we're still going to be eating we're still going to have things but just the variety that we're accustomed to probably is not going to be here no mention of how people who are keto or paleo are pretty screwed are gonna have to pay a lot more Penfield said, quote, we have a resilient economy and a resilient supply chain, and we're going to be able to get through this. There's just going to be issues where we can't find certain things probably for the next year and a half. Again, it looks like really bad stagflation for major consumer staples, shrinkflation and stagflation, and also for certain food items looks like for sure meat, for chicken, beef, and pork. Whereas other items like consumer discretionary, the prices on those may fall. There might not be as much consumer demand. And dollar denominated debt outside the United States looks like it's still imploding because the dollar is still relatively strong against other trashy, including the dollar fiat currencies. This is why I got in an argument with that guy and why he started calling me names because he said that everything is deflation and it's not that simple. It's not just black and white. The government, the central banks, the supply chain problems are causing distortions. And that's why you can have debt deflation, debt liquidation, where debt is collapsing in dollar denominated debt outside the U.S. And then food prices here in the U.S. and in China are increasing. You can have both at the same time. So apparently this gentleman, he couldn't handle it. So he started calling me a bunch of names. And then I, of course, retaliated and then blocked him. Because I don't take crap like that from people anymore. Okay, I asked him, what's your grocery store bill, buddy? He must not shop at the grocery store. Gary says, this shit storm is just getting better and better. When they tell you it's okay, get to your bunker. <laughs> Dude, I was just kidding about soy. Oh my god, this this guy is only thinking about sex here in the comment section. That's all he's talking about. Okay, we need to clean this up. That needs to be PG thirteen, buddy. You need to you need to uh, spend your money elsewhere.
instead of a live stream show, it needs to be a spent elsewhere, let's just say. You need an hour to yourself. Okay, I want to thank everyone for listening to the live stream show. All the articles discussed will be in the information and description section. There are a lot of them if you want to go in depth. Also, Fox News has a bunch of interviews with farmers. I will attach some in the information and description section. Thank you very much to my over 800 Patreon account contributors. I think it's actually over 900 now. It's going really, really rapidly each day. It's only five bucks a month. It's a cup of an overpriced cup of pretty crappy coffee. So you can learn about investing. You can learn how I do my research. You can learn how I think and analyze companies and industries behind the paywall. There are a lot of articles about the oil industry, oil companies, um, gold and silver companies. There was a really lengthy piece I put out a few days ago about the uranium market and the major risks that a lot of investment professionals aren't talking about. So all that's behind the paywall at only five bucks a month. I think it's the best deal on the internet for the research that I do. Thank you very much to my monthly PayPal contributors and people throw me a tip once in a while. You can donate on my website or you can, uh, there's crypto addresses uh, below each video in the information and description, and description section. Okay, everyone have a nice night.